Welcome to Video Church School for the Seacon Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. My name is Kristen Putney, and I am the Director of Faith Formation and Youth Ministry. If this is your first time joining us, great to have you. This is a multi-age experience, so everyone in the home is invited to engage. I am going to begin with my altar. And if you're noticing, I have a theme going on. Every week I try to do that. And my theme today has to do with birds. So I have a few things happening here. Of course, I think of, when I think of birds, I think of the sky. And so up in the corner here, I have a beautiful painting done by a local artist who I know very well, Carolyn Mulvey. And um, I also have a flower from my garden. And I always encourage all of you to make a special space in your home, a quiet space with a table, and make an altar. And these are some of the items that you can also put on your table. You can put a flower from your garden, a special cross that you may have, or you can make one, a Christ candle, it can be a real candle, or it can be an LED. And then think of a theme. You can use the themes that I always introduce each week. So moving along with the theme, I have an owl and a blue jay. And then up here I have a cardinal. And I'm also going to talk about cultures. We've been talking about different cultures through the weeks and months. And I'm lifting up two cultures today, but one in particular that's standing on my Alter is a doll that I have, um, and she is a Native American, and she is actually holding something that we're going to end up making today, which is a dream catcher. And then I've talked about this uh, last week and many weeks prior, my favorite rendering of a, an artist, and that is a rendering of Jesus. It's a painting of Jesus, and it does have some Native American symbols in the background, so I thought that was appropriate for today. I'm going to begin with, since we're going to be talking about birds and the sky and creation, uh, we'll give thanks to God, of course, for an, our environment, but I'm going to start with my rain stick. So if you could just center yourselves in prayer and with your eyes open or closed, just listen to the beautiful sounds of nature, which is the rain. So we give thanks for the rain that we often need for our land and our gardens and our flowers. One of the first activities before we pray, because I always do three things, a way to pray, I tell scripture or a story, and then I end with sign language. But I want to start off with an activity that has to do with the birds. So I invite you all to take a nature walk. Have a, a nice little walk, it could be in the morning or at dusk, and maybe carry a pad or use a phone to take pictures. And so I'm going to invite you to see if you can find some of the birds that I mentioned today, but also any bird that you see. And maybe you could even find out um, more about that particular bird, and maybe there's a particular meaning that a culture identifies um, with the bird, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So the owl here often represents wisdom and the blue jay often represents protection. I don't know if you've ever seen blue jays fly around, but sometimes they look mean, but really they're just protecting um, themselves or their, their little birds, um, their little offspring. So I have two birds here. And then the cardinal actually 
the Native Americans believe that that is a message from those who have passed on. And I like that because I've had people pass away and for whatever reason, we have identified their spirit around us in a cardinal. Um, it just happens that a cardinal um, shows up at the right time when we're thinking of our loved one and it works for us. So perhaps that's something that you do. But that is the cardinal. And then I have another bird that I want to share with you, the chickadee. And this is another local artist, Holly Walk. And this is a little chickadee and chickadees bring hope and good fortune. I think I'll put that right here. And also today, this is going to move us into our prayer. I am going to show you and talk about, um, I'm going to show you how to fold a paper bird. This happens to be a water bird, but I also want to invite you to learn how to fold a crane. And in Japanese, the culture, they fold cranes and there's a certain meaning. And I purchased this one from an artist. Isn't that, it's a really tiny little crane. I'm going to put this on my altar as well. And my water bird. So as I invite you to pray, there is a little bit of preparation for the way to pray today. And all the directions will be in an email that I send out to all my families. You can also Google how to make a crane. And so I invite you to get a square piece of paper. You can make a square out of um, computer paper, but I happen to have origami paper. And it is in the shape of a square. And we're going to fold it in half. We're making this right here, a water bird. It's similar to the crane, but the crane is, is somewhat involved. Um, and actually, I'm folding this in half, but part of our prayer actually, <laughs> I forgot about this part, sorry. You're gonna write the name or names on the paper of people that need a prayer, a get well prayer. So this prayer is for those who are ill or not well. You can make many of these, so you could put one name on each paper, or you could put many. Now, certainly we've been talking a lot about COVID, and people are not well around the country. Maybe you can, you don't have a name, but just people in general. But then there might be people that, I know several people that are not well, and I'm gonna write their names down. One is my little friend from church school, a little girl from church school, um, and her, her mom just, uh, texted me and said, will you pray for my little girl? So I am writing her name down. I'm also writing someone in my family who hasn't been feeling well. So I have two names down, but you can write, and I think I'm going to write all of you down. That's what I'm going to do. So once you have the names, again, a square piece of paper, fold it in half. And then when you open it up, you're gonna actually fold it again, almost like a paper airplane, like this. This, you really need a flat surface. I'm not doing a great job of this, but that's okay. Make sure that the edges are crisp, fold them down. So now you have this shape, okay? And then you're gonna fold it down once again, right in half. See, just like that, see? over like that and again nice and crisp the next part is a little difficult so what's happening right now is you have this shape okay and this is the bottom of the water bird or the tail of the water bird and I'm gonna lift up straight up I want this line to go straight up and it's called a reverse fold a little tricky and what you need to do is you have to hold this tail and get this to go straight up and it's a little tricky but I did it okay straight up like that so now what I just did was this is the neck this is the tail this is the bottom and now I just have to make the face and so again you're gonna kind of open it and turn it over so you have like a beak and it, it somewhat naturally folds. It's 
a little, and you have to pinch it really tight, get all the creases. Now, they, they're they all different, just like the birds are. So this one has a long, um, kind of has a shorter neck and a longer beak, but that's fine. And so that is our crane. And after you do that, you could say the prayer before or after, but you can repeat after me. This is the prayer that I'm going to send to you. We're going to pray for those who are ill. Loving God, loving God, I write names on paper, I write names on paper, of people who are ill, of people who are ill, and need get well wishes, and need get well wishes. I fold this paper, this paper, into a bird of hope and wellness. Asking for blessings for each person. Asking for blessings for each person. Amen. So you could say this prayer each time you fold a paper. I have many that I've, I've already done here today with different names on it. I'm going to put that one right there. This one's, yep, perfect. So that is our creative way to pray today. For scripture today, we're going to read, I'm going to read to you, if you have a Bible, you can open it up to Isaiah 41, chapter 41, verse 10. And this is about God giving strength. And hear these words now. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, and this is about God lightens your burdens. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. I have a story that has to do with the crane. That's a water bird, but the crane also. It's a bird that has great meaning, as I shared with you, has the meaning of hope. And actually, the crane has the meaning. I didn't share that with you, and I'm going to share it with you right now. The crane means good fortune and longevity, long life. And that has to do with the story that I want to share with you today. The book is called Sudeiko. Maybe you know it. And when you look at this, this is a really beautiful cover because I see the crane right here. And these almost look like birds. But when you look up close, it's actually the eye of the girl who is in this story. And it's a true story. I don't know if you can see that, but this would be her nose. And this would be the part right in her eye right there, the shadow. So this is a story by Elena Kaur and Ed Young. And it's, a, it's based on a true story. It's a true story of a little girl, Sadako Sasaki, who lived in... Um, Hiroshima, Japan, at the time of the atomic bomb by the U.S. She became ill from the radiation and spent time in a nursing home to get well. So this was in the 1950s, actually. And um, she, uh, the story, she was very ill. And um, it was because of, prior to that, when she was a little girl, the radiation from the atomic bomb. So it's a very sad story. Um, and But while she was in the nursing home, she was very hopeful. And she came upon an old tale. And the tale was that if she folded cranes like these, like this little, little tiny one, if she made a thousand of them, she could make one wish and it would come true. And her wish was to stay alive. To, to get through her illness. So every day she made, she folded as many as she could. She did become very, very weak. 
and she only folded 644 and she was just too weak and she passed away. But the, the story goes on and I like this part of the story. Her friends and family made the remainder number to make a thousand so that her memory would live on forever and she would have long life. And even though she wasn't on earth, she would live forever in everyone's hearts and minds. And what they did was, they at the end of the story, they made a beautiful sculpture, a, a statue. Here it is here, of her. It's a statue on a mountain and it has a golden crane. She's holding a golden crane. There it is. And every year, um, they have a particular holiday and millions of cranes are made. And um, they remember this story and they remember the longevity of Sudeiko. And so I invite you all to do that. You can look up online how to make a crane and I'm gonna send in my email how to make this uh, water bird. I also wanted to remind you that long ago, in church school, we read this book, and during coffee hour, we actually had people write on our paper names of people that needed a prayer for their illness, and we folded them. And I don't know how many, I don't think we made a thousand, but we had many, and we had them all, we had them stringed um, up above at the ceiling line all the way around. The church school children were part of that. I have another story that I want to lift up. Oh, I actually had, so here are the two stories. Here are the figurines. So the, the first um, story is about a little girl from Japan. And then the other story is about this culture, the Native American culture. Here's one of my figurines, but it's about a little baby, a little young boy. And this book is called Knots on the Counting Rope. And this is a great story, of course. It's about a Native American little boy who was born and he's very close to his grandfather. And so he wants to hear again the story of how he was born. And so the story goes on and when he was born, he was very ill. And in this culture, the way they name their babies, they have a naming ceremony and he was named boy strength of blue horses. So he was very little, but the grandfather could see the strength in this little boy. But there was something else that had happened to this little boy. When he was born, he was born blind. So this little boy is growing up and learning about what is around him and he's learning a new way to see or his only way to see. But I thought it was very interesting and I wanted to share with you this page because the little boy, um, he is being told what he was named after, but he didn't understand. He knew what horses, he knew what that was, but he didn't understand the color blue. And so the grandfather said, um, the little boy says, I see the horses with my hands, grandfather, but I cannot see the blue. What is blue? So the grandfather answers, you know morning, boy. Yes, I can feel morning. Morning throws off the blanket of night. And you know sunshine. Yes, I hear sunshine in the song of the birds. And you know sky, boy. Yes, sky touches my face, soft like lamb's wool, and I breathe its softness. Blue is all of these. Blue is the feeling of a spring day beginning. Try, try to see it, boy. Blue, blue. Blue is the morning, the sunrise, the sky, the song of the birds. Oh, I see it. Blue, blue. Blue is happiness, grandfather. I feel it in my heart. So I love that page and I wanted to lift up um, other cultures and other ways of of seeing and hearing and understanding. And so at the end of this video, I always do sign language. And I thought this was really, really nice to hear how someone who's blind would understand what the color blue is like. 
So I highly recommend this book. Thinking about the Native American culture, and they're very connected to the earth, and they have their ways of saying their special uh, prayers or words for their gods or their spirits. And one thing that I've done with the church school children is this is something that they create and it's called a dream catcher. And the idea is to place this over uh, where you sleep so that you won't have bad dreams and all the, maybe the bad dreams or thoughts would get tangled in this dream catcher. So that's what we're gonna do today. I invite you all to, all you need is a paper plate, it could be small or big. And the first thing I invite you to do is fold your paper plate in half and you would cut right here all the way and you end up taking this away. Okay, that's number one. Number two is you can use a hole punch and make holes all the way around or I ended up just going like this and cutting a V with scissors and it made a little hole. And so this is the dream catcher that I invite you to make. You can use crayons and color all around the circle. I didn't actually do that, but what I did do was I made a hanging part with beads. And so as you make this dream catcher, you can use yarn or ribbon or string. If you have beads, you can add beads, but you want, the idea is that you fill this up so that the thoughts and dreams at night, if there's anything is, is harmful or bad, you wanna have a peaceful sleep, they'll, they'll somewhat get caught in here. That's what they believe, and so it's a nice thought. I like to think of it too, that the presence of God surrounds us when we go to sleep, we say our prayers, and so um, we can give God our, our um, fears or our things that we worry about, and we can pray for those who are ill, and so that's in our culture what we do. But this is um, also another thing that you can at the very end, if you don't have feathers, I didn't have feathers, I just used yarn and made somewhat of a tassel. So that is a fun little project. I invite you all to, to make the dream catcher and remember our Native American friends and their culture. We lift it up. And so I'm going to end with, we can all say that um, to be not afraid and to know that God is with each of you. So we're going to say, we're going to sign language, not afraid, God with me. God is with me. Okay, so we're going to begin with, this is not, so not, and afraid is <gasps> like that, <gasps> okay, <gasps> afraid, so not afraid. And then God, we know this, we point up and we bring down. That's God, God, and then this is with, we've done this before, with me. So let's try that. So do not be afraid, God is with me. Remember that as you go through the week, continue to pray for those who are ill, those who maybe are anxious, they could have an illness, uh, they could have COVID, there's people, certainly many people on the news we can pray for. Um, we've heard in our community, our church community, those who have been struggling with cancer, so we pray for them. Um, even if it's just a simple cold, we're all nervous these days, so we pray for them. And certainly those who are just afraid because there's so much happening and there's lots of changes. And so I wish you a great week and that may God be with you and be not afraid. Amen.